All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Friends Occasionally Not Disagreeing. I disagree. Son of a... All right. Tonight, we are headed back to the video game genre, I suppose, or medium, maybe is a better word here. And we're going to talk about the top five SNES, or is it SNES? Oh, we're going to start that debate again. Uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System Games. And this is, uh, to make sure we clarify here, this is very subjectively chosen our top five SNES games, not what is objectively the best five SNES games. Although maybe someone's list will in fact look like some other lists that are out there. I don't know. We shall see. Um, so we'll let everybody introduce themselves here. I'm Cody with you again. I'm Blue. I'm Brett. FDM or Matt, if you would like. If you would like. All right. So we thought we'd start as our usual format here, just kind of a little experience ourselves with this topic, um, with the SNES. So I'm trying to, I didn't actually bother to look up the dates, but we're probably talking like what, 92, 91, 92, 93, somewhere in there. Does that sound about right? I believe it came out in 90, maybe 91. I'd have to look. I got mine in 91, I think. But I think two years, you know, one and a half, two years after the Sega Genesis came out which was 1989. Okay. And 1991 was, in North America, it says. 91. And this was also, um, and Nintendo still does this, so do the other companies, but there was also overlap here, right? Because the NES was still around for a little while, spit out kind of like that last batch of games while the SNES was kind of becoming the dominant platform here. Um, so for me, this was, uh, I had a friend who had the SNES before I did and uh, was not a particularly close friend. I'd almost say more of an acquaintance. Um, and I stayed the night at his house just simply to play the the SNES one time. And we played, I think, Ninja Turtles 4. Did that come up for the SNES? Turtles in Time? I think we played that. Yep. And um, probably some other games as well after that. But I didn't get mine until, I don't know if it was a Christmas present or when I got mine, but um i had a lot of fun with it i think it came, i think mine came with the uh super mario world i want to say was the edition i had yeah um which i think a lot of the early ones probably had but to me it was just neat with the kind of advanced technology going from the nintendo to the super nintendo with the graphics getting better and the ability to do more you know shading or um kind of like I don't know, texture effects, I guess. I don't know what the technical term would be, but kind of like the game has started to seem a little more detailed. Uh, Realistic's pro- probably not the right word for what they were showing here on the SNES, but but you could definitely tell it was a jump up from um, the Nintendo and especially those early systems, probably up to like, what, the N64, I think? There was all the hype of like, this is how many bits this system is. Oh my God, you won't believe it. And they doubled it, man. They doubled it. So there was that part of it too. And then I think by the next generation after that, people were like, man, I really, it's not really how you measured anymore, I guess. So um, yeah, but I have just a lot of fond memories of SNES playing different games with different friends of mine. Um, that I can recall through different eras of my life um, and a lot, a lot of good memories with uh, the SNES. So I'll let somebody else tell their memories here. Well, um, it's like I go, I, I don't remember precisely when we got our Super Nintendo. It, um, what, what I do remember most about it is that it was, so I, I was there, our parents bought us the original Nintendo system because we were only five and six, my brother and I, and uh but when the super nintendo came out we had a bit of an allowance we were at already like kind of working on the farm at that point and like we actually were like getting some pay (laughs) when we were just like slave labor for our parents (laughs) um and i I remember that uh we uh we had to pay like i think it was like half of it um our parents agreed like pay half it and and my brother and i had to pony up the other half um I don't think it wasn't to the point yet where our parents made us sell the other system <laughs> like that. That came later. Like we couldn't keep the old systems. Like we had to like get rid of one to get a new one, which was Oof. terribly sad, Oof. but tragic. Um, so I, I don't remember precisely when in the cycle I got my Super Nintendo, but I did put a lot of time into it. Um, you know, one of the games that I, I really kind of stands out to me is um, 
is the first Griffey baseball game we had. Uh, my brother and I and our uh, our neighbor who uh, makes our, our closest neighbor. It wasn't like it was just down the road, road a bit. Um, we would stay up for hours, like way past our bedtime, just playing a game like over and over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of other games too, but that was just kind of really sticks out for a bit. It definitely, you know, I, I went from the original Nintendo to the Super Nintendo. I did buy the the Genesis after the Super Nintendo, even though, you know, it, it came out earlier chronologically. Um, so I, I had did start to like split my my game time between the two systems, you know, at some point. Um, but I do have a lot of a lot of fond memories of the Super Nintendo. Can I ask a dumb question? You That's said good. you had to give up your old system when you got a new one. Were you able to keep both the Super Nintendo and the Genesis at the same time? Yes, I did. We did have that. I said I think it was okay. it was okay. like um That's good. Like from the sixty four on, my parents were like, All right, if you're gonna buy a new system, you gotta get rid of some of these old ones. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I guess since I started talking, I'll just I'll just go on, I guess. Like the Super Nintendo going unless you are you still going? Still uh, going on. No, no, I'm good. Okay. Um, I would just define it as the first system I was really actually, and probably the last system, I was just really excited about a system coming out because, you know, we had Nintendo Power Magazine and they showed us like scenes of like Link to the Past and Mario World and all these essentially upgraded versions of games that we already knew and loved. Um, uh, Final Fantasy 2, which I later find is Final Fantasy 4. Um, but yeah, all those, like, you see pictures of them, and, and I was just, like, waiting for that thing to come out. And looking at the, the the timeline, I probably got mine actually in 92, not 91, as I previously said, because I got it for my birthday, which it would have had to have been 92, which makes sense. I think I was in eighth grade, or eighth grade when I got it, seventh or eighth grade, something like that. I don't know what else to have to say about it. It's just, it's still my favorite system, because it's, mm. the 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 style of game doesn't change. They just get a little bit better. Like Super Metroid is Metroid, just better. Link to the Past is Zelda, just better. They don't, I don't know. It, it doesn't change like the way I have to think about gaming. It's just the the controllers, the same controller, but but better. I even got one of these suckers that I use for games on the computer. The Super Nintendo controller, really there happy with it. Those look like it have joysticks on it though. It does, <laughs> but that doesn't bother me. It's just added on there. Um, I guess that's about all I all I have to say. I remember getting getting that sucker and just like being excited, really excited about finally having it. Like that was the system for me. Yeah, I guess I can go. So I actually didn't own a Super Nintendo until 2013. Um, not to say I don't have any experience with that; I just never owned one. So I'm. One of the few ones here, well, I guess, sure, Brett, we both had Genesis at the same time, but my first console was actually uh, Sega Master System. And so we, uh, you know, it did not do well in the United States if people aren't even familiar. It was a thing, but it was an 8-bit system. Uh, And so we had that, and actually my parents bought uh, NES when I think I was probably like four or five and got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. And so never really, we, we had that. And then we switched to Genesis when Sonic came out. And so when that whole uh, blast processing campaign came and, you know, it was definitely the, a capstone moment in probably like the nineties gaming culture. Um, yeah. We were very pretty firmly like having Sega and, um, you know, I never like, felt like I engaged in the console war and like one was better than the other. I just, you know, played what we had. Um, but I did have a friend down the street who had Super Nintendo, and I pretty much remembered playing either NBA Jam, uh, Super Mario World, and I think Turtles in Time. So kind of those were the three ones. And I think there was one other time where I went to another friend's house and we played Ken Griffey and Street Fighter. But, you know, very surface level understanding of what the Super Nintendo did until uh explored a little bit more in the... 2010s is that is that how we refer to that decade <laughs> the 10s yeah, i guess that's a confusing one i haven't yeah. figured it out yet yeah so 
that's my my perspective so far. I'm still calling it last decade. Yeah, <laughs> that that works. Well, yes. it's not well. Yeah, I guess it would be. Let's disagree about this. Disagree. Subvert the time. I was really hoping you were going to say I I hadn't played the Super Nintendo until like or I hadn't gotten one until like this week for the episode, <laughs> and I was like, awesome. <laughs> but that was not the case. All right. Well, before we get into the list, I guess maybe this has kind of been touched on a bit, but I just thought it'd be worth mentioning, um, at least from the Nintendo it, advertisement side, if nothing else, you know, they tried to tout some of these newer uh, technological breakthroughs that they had um, with the Super Nintendo as far as um, things that games could do that they previously couldn't do. So I was just looking through here and I know there's a couple of these, but they have the, uh, uh, well, I have a couple things here to talk about, I guess. So we had the Super FX chip, which is kind of what let games like Star Fox be possible, where it was kind of like that 3D world, even though you were more or less playing on like a two-dimensional system at the time still. So that was kind of different. And they also had, I don't know what it was called, but they had the ability to rotate and zoom in and out of sprites. They did yeah, that a lot. We're talking about Mode 7, right? This is what we're... The technological I, feature, right? I knew I knew something was called Mode Seven. So if that's what that is, that's then... probably what it's used in like a ton of. Like you can see, it, you're like, oh, I'm playing a Super NES game because they're rotating the screen. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Super Castlevania. Was a yes, exactly. Good example Comes right to mind. Um, yeah. yeah, Pilot cool. Wings. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch. So they were trying to. You could see here, you know, but especially as the lifespan went on for this system, they were trying to tweak what they could get out of it especially as far as what the games could do. And then, you know, obviously the leap after this is going to be the 64 for Nintendo. So that's going to be uh, basically the advent of 3D gaming for Nintendo, right? Like that's when they kind of jump full full into that. Um, we also had the controller, which Matt just kind of showed, which was basically the Nintendo controller, but with shoulder pads and then also uh, X and Y added to it. So more buttons you could press. And this was... Do you remember there was definitely a time when like you play video games and I felt like it was like a badge of honor for the system to have like more buttons than the previous one or their competitors <laughs> like now has 37 <laughs> buttons, but I guess now they do. I mean, now there's a ton of buttons on them anyway, but um, what else do we have here? We had the super game boy attachment for the SNES, which allowed you to put game boy games in and play them on your SNES. I'd forgotten that. That with, I had it. <laughs> with color palettes, no less. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, Brett, yeah, you had this always mystified me. It probably was not a big deal to you, but I remember going to your house uh, anytime I would go there and you had the Mario paint with the mouse. Yeah. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> it's like a mouse. Never really caught on with anything else, but it was it was amazing for one game. Yeah. <laughs> I can stamp a Mario. Woo. <laughs> um, let's see what else we had here. Game Genie. Mm -hmm. I was still around at that time. We had... I feel like we, we can't not mention uh, probably like a, a page right out of Gunpei Yokoi's textbook in terms of how he did more with less for hardware, but you know, late into the life with Donkey Kong Country and mm. you know the animation style and how they really pushed the Super Nintendo to its limits. Yeah, I forget the technical specifications, but yeah, that's like a feather in Nintendo's hat there. That is the most depressing story about somebody, the story of Gunpai Yokoi. Like, what happens to him is so, like, so friggin' sad. Elucidate us. Oh, uh, he, he then developed a Virtual Boy, was kind of ousted out of Nintendo in shame, and then died in a car accident. Oh, yeah. oh carrying on. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, okay. Uh, let's see. Japan, I guess, had a modem attachment, which I did not know about. That connected to a radio station, lasted for five years, and you could play um, remakes or sequels to older games, apparently. I did not know about that. All right. And then at the end, we should also put the historical footnote in here. Of course, we had the Super NES CD-ROM prototype. Dun, dun, dun. Which became what? Which became the rival. Sony PlayStation. Sony PlayStation. So, oh, goodness. All right, what else do we have here? Finishing up, let's see. I'm just kind of paraphrasing again from websites here. We have uh, 
49 million consoles sold, which was says it was the best selling console of its era, but those numbers are really not that high compared to the bigger end systems I know today. Uh, that's about it. Yeah, I don't know. So it felt it felt different to me to play on it i don't know if it was the controller or just the improved graphics or what the case was but it felt it felt more modern than the than the nets you could definitely tell i guess i'd ask um well blue if you had the master system and then hudson i guess i know you had at least one of the ataris right did you have multiple gens i had we had an atari 2600 and nintendo a turbo graphic 16 and a super nes at the time so I guess what I guess what I'm getting at here is I I had an Atari I don't know which one it was probably 26 and I also had an uh, Odyssey I believe oh, back wow. in the day for a little while but like in terms of a system or a company that you kind of stayed with this was the first one that had the new jump to the next generation you know that I really paid attention to and cared about so to me this was a pretty big deal that like there was the new version of this thing that I loved coming out but. For you two, just kind of for comparison's sake here, was it like that when like the Genesis came out for you, Blue? Yeah, I'd say um, the Master System. Yeah, we we really liked that, and then I uh, definitely was really excited to get the Genesis. And I think in just hindsight, you know, it, I can't say that I necessarily prefer one or the other, but I think I've conceded that. You know, the console war was great, but clearly the Super Nintendo was the better of the two consoles. Hmm. Um, and a couple of reasons, which I think we can jump into further. But um, yeah, I think ultimately I loved the Genesis. I thought it was cool. And, you know, you were mentioning the leap from 8 to 16 bit and how much of a technical feat that was. And basically, you know, at the time you had arcade equivalent ports. You'd, I'm thinking of examples like, Altered Beast and Shinobi being like pretty uh, popular arcade games and then being able to have that technology in home was huge. Uh, And so I don't know if that was a perspective of you, but yeah. Or another example of like 8-bit, like just being able to play the Turtles arcade game at home, you know, it was just amazing to me. It continues though. What were they thinking? Yeah, I don't know. What, Sega? <laughs> no, for, for the Turtles arcade game. You only got two continues to beat the whole game. That's yeah. crazy. You just need to oh. be able to keep putting quarters in. Yeah, or just try keep... to get the Konami code at the very like <laughs> half of a second you have at the, yeah, that's the title the screen. To, that's the way to do it. Well, I think you mentioned two other things in there too, Blue, that are interesting. One is, you know, as the games at home began to get better, I kind of wonder if this was the generation that maybe really pushed a lot of arcades into some financial trouble. Because you could play a lot of the things at home that you could get, you know, why it's, you know, plunk down a hundred dollars and quarters at the arcade. If you could buy the same game for 50 bucks at home. Yeah. That and the other piece is just like PC gaming, I think is just on the tertiary here. And it isn't, you know, I think from the NES era to probably the beginning of the nineties, uh, I think it was basically at the point where it started getting in the, the mix and John Carmack figured out how to, actually program computer software you know there wasn't much you know leap in terms of how pc gaming was compared to console gaming and you know i think alongside those you're talking about arcades and clearly much stronger technical uh, processors and graphics processors versus a home console which really will be constrained as soon as it's manufactured yeah uh boy it's just making me think of more and more things here too but I guess we should also mention, you know, we kind of have beaten around the actual verbiage of this, but the, the Super Nintendo Genesis War was huge, just in terms of everything: advertisement, games, who had the who had the better Aladdin game versus who had the better Lion King game, or whatever the case was. But that's, you know, I know the generation like after this, when PlayStation's evolved too, was maybe like the height of the kind of advertisement and fanboy rivalry i don't nowadays i feel like and i could be wrong but i feel like a lot of people are like i have an xbox and i have a playstation and i might have a nintendo switch also but this was definitely like a you know sega does what nintendo don't type era like it was smacking each other down like the old coke and pepsi ads and they were going at it for a while 
for me specifically at the time, what, what it was was what games did they offer? You know, I wanted to play a- adventure games that aren't necessarily level based. I wanted to play RPGs. I wanted to play Metroidvania type stuff. And frankly, there's a lot more. There was a lot more of that for the Super Nintendo. Now, when Sega kind of took up a lot of that, I, I, I. I did get a 64, but I really shouldn't have. I really should have got a PlayStation because they had the Final Fantasy games. They had Symphony of the Night. They had all that stuff, and I should have gone that route instead. But, you know, that's why I I, I always was under the impression as a kid that Genesis was more the sports game console, and I didn't have as much interest in sports games, so that's why I didn't. Yeah, Yeah, they had the big EA sports contract that pumped out everything. (laughs) That's why I had an impression. Every sport, every year. Yeah, 95, 96, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I used to like electronic arts back when they made computer games in the 80s, but now it seems that's all they do. <laughs> well, yeah, that'd be a whole nother, whole nother topic we're talking yes. to sorry, ones that sorry, have... Sorry, sorry. No, no, I mean, it's not. I'm just saying. Sorry. Well, either way. Uh, okay. Well, any last comments before we jump into our top... Well, let's do honorable mentions first here. Does anybody else have any comments before we start with those? All right. Well, uh, we kind of are going to run this. If you did join us for what was the one we ranked? Was it the NES episode, the top five NES? So we're going to kind of run this similar for our listeners out there. Each person's going to get roughly two minutes ish to spend as they would like talking about their honorable mentions, whether that is fond memories of one or two games that they want to go into more detail on, or if they just have a large list they want to try to read through, whatever they want to do with their two minutes. And then we'll go on to our number five games across the board and then four and so on up to the top. Um, And we'll go from there. So honorable mentions. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Well, I'll start, I guess. How about that? So my honorable mentions, I came up with a list of about 20 games for this podcast and I trimmed it down to 15 that probably have a little more um, memory for me here. So I'm going to kind of run through some of these early ones quick. 15, I have Saturday Night Slam Masters, an obscure wrestling game, but it was really fun. Very arcadey graphics. Number 14, I have Super Smash TV, which I had really good times playing with friends through all the stages on. That was one of those early, I don't know if it was a launch title, but it had to be pretty close. 13 is the weird game Populous, um, which I had where you were basically God and raised in lowered land and tried to complete some objective. I couldn't tell you what the hell the objective was, but I had fun playing the game. <laughs> it was... It was something. Uh, number 12, I have Super Punch-Out, which I have always loved all the Punch-Out games. Number 11, here's a surprise for people, Super Metroid, down at number 11 on my list, which I love the series also. Number 10, Donkey Kong Country, which as Blue mentioned, the graphics were just fantastic at the time. Um, gameplay was really tight. You could play. Could you play that one two-player? The first one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you played two player, yeah, if Donkey Kong got slapped or something, you, the other player would become Diddy Kong if you had an option. Oh yeah, yeah. If you player. had him, right? Okay. Yeah, that's right because you had to get him. All right, number nine, F Zero, which I famously remember I bought with Kool Aid points. So those were the good old days. But a lot of time spent on F Zero trying to beat certain times on certain tracks, and really like that series. Hint, Nintendo. Hint. Uh, number eight, Harvest Moon, which I randomly rented at a video game shop in Roger City and bought the copy they had there and then later sold it for much more than I bought it for. So <laughs> a farming sim. Who doesn't like a good farming sim, though? Good times. Number seven, I have NBA Jam Tournament Edition, which is probably a little better than the original one, but fantastic two-player uh, gameplay. Played a lot of games of that with people through the years. And then my number six, just missing here, last second switch, is Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Comes in at number six on my list. Um, Great gameplay, good story, good graphics, great world building, good levels. There we go. All right, so that's my honorable mentions. Let's go to... (laughs) Matt's already starting to make fun of my list here. Let's go to Hudson. What do you have for your honorables? Um, probably I'm guessing that some of my honorables will make it on your list and some of them, because some of your honorables will make it on mine, but I'm going to start with SimCity. Uh, just had a lot of fun with that game. Great music, great 
it, it's just a lot of fun. I just remember there's this, I don't remember how to do it, but there's a code where you can like get like max money really early on. And I found the game unplayable unless you did it. But then again, I was like in seventh or eighth grade. So um, past that, there's two two fighting games I got to put on the list. And that's Mortal Kombat 2 and Street Fighter 2. They're both great. I and and I'm talking any incarnation of this of the Street Fighter two. I mean, they're really all the same. I guess if I had to pick one, I'd say Super, but I don't know. They're just good. Uh, there's a big continuing tournament that will never get finished. That's a story for another time. Oh, it'll get finished. Uh, <laughs> um, next, a weird one I want to mention is Clay Fighter, just because that's the first time I ever played a game and it sang to me. Like we turn on turn on the game, we're just like listening to the music, and all of a sudden you hear. Clay fighter, clay, clay fighter. And we're like, holy shit, the game's singing to us. Mm. Um, Out of this world has a, just an amazing look to it. I wish the game were more playable. I mean, it is playable, but it like has the controls of something like a Dragon Slayer for the arcade. And it's really hard, but it, it has a great look and a great story. And that running from the beast music is freaking amazing. Another game with great music is Gradius 3. Love that soundtrack from beginning to end. Um, another honorable mention has to be Pilot Wings. A super Punch Out, those two are both very good NES games. Um, Earthbound is is amazing. I, I played that maybe six or seven years ago. Um, finally, uh, a kid in college made me start playing it. And I fi- finally, he's he's like, okay, if you finish that, and this is like 15 years later, I will take you to dinner. So I finally sat down and played it, finished it. And then we went out for Ethiopian food. It was great. Wow. So you paid up on it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And then the last, <laughs> the last uh, four that I have to mention really briefly, uh, Final Fantasy IV, which is to five, which is the first game I ever like got into emulation for because when seven came out, I wasn't very excited about it. But what that made me realize is that what I knew was three was actually six. So there's some missing games in here, folks. So I had to figure out what was going on. So I found a copy of Final Fantasy V that was translated by fans and played it on emulation. It was great. Uh, Chrono Trigger and Secret of Mana also on that list. Great soundtracks, great games. The problem with those is it's really tough at our ages to sit down and play a game like that. It really is. Chrono Trigger is at least mercifully short. Secret of Mana is not too bad, I suppose, but um, they just got great stories, and the music for those games is amazing. There's some wonderful orchestrated versions of that stuff, too, but I think that's... Oh, yeah. Last but not least, Star Trek Starfleet Academy. Mm. My friend and I used to hook the, hook it up to two TVs and block off the top and block off the bottom of each TV so that we couldn't see each other and we'd do the Star Starfleet duel thing. That was so much fun. Nice. I always lost because I was terrible at it. <laughs> terrible. Wait, what did you do? You blocked the TV like so you could only Okay, see imagine where you, imagine you're playing Goldeneye. You hook Goldeneye up to four TVs and then you literally block off the screen. So you only saw your corner. So you couldn't like just look at what other people are doing, you know, because in, in that game, you could cloak like you could put on a cloaking device and like, oh, I can see that they're looking right at me. But they're, I, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Let's head to uh, let's see. We'll go to Brett next. All right. Well, uh, a few of the similar games that have been mentioned already. Um, in no particular order here, I had Harvest Moon, which I, it was a game I loved playing, um, you know, because I just, I just couldn't get enough farming in my actual reality life. So I <laughs> went <laughs> and farmed in, in digital as well. Um, though I never, I, I, I'm certain I never finished that game. I probably started it dozens of times. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a fun game. You just, just sit and chill and just do your daily chores and stuff. But um uh, NBA Jam was just super cool because it's it's a basketball game, but it's it gets crazy, <laughs> you know, like dunking from the half court line and hitting like seventy point three pointers and um, just just craziness happening. And um, also I had Sim City um, because what eleven year old doesn't love uh, like city management? Um, but it actually it was really fun. I you know I definitely was you know very basic compared to you know what you can do now with some city games but um but still it was very cool and enjoyable uh f0 i really enjoyed it. like the i think it was it was the first game i played that um the speed of it felt like 
intoxicating. It was like, wow, I'm moving fast here. And, uh, you know, it, it just was really cool. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, Griffey baseball, major league baseball. Um, you know, the first one, uh, we paid my brother and I, and, and our friend across the street, we put so many hours in that game and, um, it was just really, you know, we do like seasons and, um, just it was like a side note it was just funny because all the, all the players in the game had like real stats of, of what their counterparts, their real life counterparts were, but all the names, they couldn't use actual player names except for Griffey himself. That's right. And so he had like all these crazy, um, like one, for example, like all the, uh, the Red Sox was all, um, what was it? Crap. Now I'm forgetting it. Um, but it was all like, like famous Boston stuff. Yeah. I think they're like presidents and, uh, founding father type people. Yeah. It was something like that. Revolutionary but, people. Yeah. Um, so that was just, just fun. And, um, a, a game that I, I, I actually wanted to put in my top five, <laughs> though, when I started thinking about it more, I was like, you know, I, I enjoy this game, but I, I don't remember much of anything about it. So I can't really put it <laughs> in my top five. It didn't really stick in my head that well, but uh, Breath of Fire was mm. probably the first, the first really big RPG that I, I played. Um, and at that age, I still wasn't like really hooked into RPGs. Like um, though it was just like a couple of years after that, I, I started getting like really into them. I really love those, but um, Breath of Fire I enjoyed a lot. But I, like I said, I can't, tell you much about it other than your character turns into a dragon <laughs> which was awesome spoiler jeez. yeah oh sorry yeah. um and then coming in at sixth uh like cody i um i would link to the past Ooh. um you know it was a game that was really fun and i it was honestly it's probably like the, the best game for the super nintendo but for me personally it's that's not in my favorite list you know, it was it was very enjoyable, and the the graphics were great, and the sound and everything. I just didn't it just didn't quite hook me as some other games. So, yeah, I definitely feel you. You mentioned F Zero, like I, I was just trying to remember back to you said it felt super fast, like it did feel like that game was flying, and that's another that had to be another one that used that uh, mode seven thing we just talked about, right? Because like you don't actually turn the spaceships. Seem, it feels I'm going like to get do, into but... that. I will get into that. That's okay. my speech. Right. That's all my right. speech later on. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to steal your thunder here. Okay, Blue. Honorable mentions. Okay, so here I'll preface by mine just because I, I literally did not play most of these on my list until you know, actually within the past decade. So a lot of these were like have the benefit of history games that like for example define the system of as i'm exploring the super nintendo really just get to do without like preconceived notions of nostalgia or you know other people's nostalgia that i get to benefit from necessarily but um i have a few more i'm not going to be redundant because i think a lot of these have been mentioned but a couple that haven't been so for example un squadron really cool shoot 'em up it has like rpg elements to it made by capcom pretty sweet uh, surprisingly, you haven't mentioned it yet, but Super Mario RPG, the Square and Nintendo mashup, pretty cool. Isometric graphics, uh, best thing to compare it to. It's not the same genre, but like Sonic 3D Blast, when they started to get into those isometric 3D on the 16 bit, thought that that was really neat. Um, Kirby's Dream Course, really, really cool, like golf game that I'd never thought about, but you punt Kirby around and you'll know, try to get him in a hole. Pretty great. Um, other pieces of people have already mentioned Secret of Mana um, Super Metroid's up there for me is on this list so these aren't in particular order um, Gradius 3 has been mentioned Donkey Kong Country that series I'd say that that's you know not in the top five but up there um, and then I'm gonna put Super Castlevania 4 just down there like I think it's fantastic but it's not in my top five and then um some Konami mentions here. I think uh, one, I think these are really interesting because Konami actually put, you know, these same games back and forth, just had to do different ports based on the hardware, but turtles in time is there for me um, on the Genesis. It was called hyperstone heist. And there actually was a difference between both games. Um, hyperstone heist had different levels compared to the super Nintendo. And also, um, I think it was just really interesting. I think the Super Nintendo had a better 
sound chip, at least for that. Uh, like for the Street Fighter games, you know, those are clear ports from back and forth. I think ultimately like Super Nintendo ports from Konami tend to be a little bit better than the ones I played and grew up with on, on uh, Genesis. So with that turtles in time, but then I think just fantastic game overall zombies ate my neighbors, mm. uh, like a B terror movie, but it's got basically everything that you would love, you know, Chucky dolls, uh, Jason hockey masks, and obviously zombies and lots of levels co-op is one of those ones that's just top down view and you get to run through the game and have different power-ups and weapons so that kind of just rounds out my honorable mention list um and plus one i think mostly all the other ones i've played that you've all mentioned i enjoy them but they're just not on the top five for me fair i always wanted to play zombies at my neighbors i never played it it's wonderful and you should is it like my what go ahead you should be disappointed that you haven't uh, my impression was that it was, is is the gameplay similar to like Fester's Quest for the NES? Yeah, I mean, but Fester's Quest is horrible, whereas, <laughs> <laughs> whereas Zombies Ate My Neighbors is actually quite polished, you know. But yeah, you're right. Like top, top, uh, top down view, um, able to move in a X, X and Y axis. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to our big ones here then. Top five. I suspect we'll probably have some repeats uh, or some re-mentions here as we continue on. So do we want to do we want to rotate or you just want to keep the same order and go through that way? Maybe that's less confusing. I don't know. We'll, we'll just maybe try it that way. Um, so, all right. So I'll go to number Works five. All right. Let's do that. Then. I think we switched it last time and that got a little more confusing. But let's try it this way straight up. So I'll just keep the same order here and we'll go through. My number five is... A uh, really obscure game, actually. Maybe one or two of you would have played this, but it was called Super Mario World. Yeah, this was a rare import made in Africa. I got, oh, I'm just joking. Obviously, this was the packing game, but I love this. Um, it felt so different than the earlier Mario games, I thought, in terms of gameplay. I guess Mario 3 was kind of headed in that direction. But for whatever reason, I, I like Mario 3 quite a bit. I don't love it as much as other people do. But this one was neat because um, simply I like the fact that the map would change as you would find the different exits and then like suddenly a new ladder would sprout up or trees would come down, there'd be a new path. And I also really liked the fact that not all, but a lot of the stages had multiple exits you could find. So it was like a little element of hidden things that were in there, especially the ghost houses in particular, you know, because there'd always be like a super hidden exit somewhere if you could managed to find it a lot of this i did on my own there might have been one or two stages maybe where i had to consult like a nintendo power um i don't think i ever had a walk through book like a strategy guide for this one per se but yoshi was in this one that was really cool um the star world the hard stages at the end of all this like just had a lot of hidden stuff packed in that you could find and unlock if you wanted to but if you also preferred you could just play like the shortest possible route through the world and you can get to the end that way also um, but a lot of cool stuff i like finding hidden stuff in the games gameplay was really tight and uh was the parachute thing that you could like fly up and then drop down do the big kaboom on so my number five super mario world let's head to hudson again just want to say really quick on your super mario worldness that that's was going to be close to being on my list as well but the thing is, if they had taken the open world of Mario World and all the cool shit you could do in the map in Mario 3 and combined it into one game, it'd be the perfect Mario game. But they have not done that. They've only given me half of the perfect Mario game both times. Anyway, my fifth game is a game that was not released in the U.S. Um, you have to be at least in Europe to get it. I've, so I, of course, have only played it on emulation, and it was... I started playing because i got into the soundtrack and sort of listened to the soundtrack because i download all these rpg soundtracks just listen to them and i like them it's a game called terranigma i don't know if any of you have ever heard of this thing it is the weirdest game i have ever played and i was just right now watching through a scene on youtube to try to remember if it was a fever dream no there is a scene where a couple of goats who are married one has <laughs> fallen and is really hurt and the wife is asking you to eat her husband so you can stay alive. This happens in a game. Um, it's an action RPG similar to Secret of Mana 
or kind of linked to the past a little bit. I'm going to say that I have not yet beat this game, and that's why it's on my list is because I've been slowly playing through it for a couple of years. And it, I don't know. It's just it is the most batshit insane story. It, it doesn't make any sense. I would almost say you should just like look it up just so you can just see how crazy it is. You. <sighs> You start underground and everybody in your town like freezes. So then you have to start like doing things so that people unfreeze, but then you go to the surface and then you have to do something to bring the plants back and then the animals back and then the birds back and then, and then the people back. But then once they come back, it's like, they've never been, it's so weird. It doesn't make any sense, but it's a great game. And I have very much enjoyed playing it. And the soundtrack is amazing. You, you play games far different than anybody else i know it's so weird you mean like the whole over a year thing (laughs) yeah like you'll be like i've been playing this one for 15 years and he doesn't mean he's been replaying it for 15 (laughs) years he means the same playthrough continuously for 15 years i feel like i would just forget where i was (laughs) Uh, what was i doing how often do i just my own curiosity how often do you play these games uh, I probably haven't played Terra Enigma for probably at least a year and a half. I, well, I get into, I get into other things as I'm doing it, but I was really into it for about six months. But you'll I pick played. that up and keep playing it if I can remember what I was supposed to do and where I was. Yeah, the game is so weird. You're trying to develop these towns now, and I was on this boat with these ghosts, but I don't remember where I was going and what I was doing. It. Sounds like a movie Justin would have us watch. To be it's like a, yeah, like it's kind of like the same thing happening when I was playing through Secret of Mana. When I was did that when I was on tour in West Virginia, and like I forgot where I was. I still have the save. I just don't know where I'm. I've looked through walkthroughs trying to figure out. Okay, you do this, then this, then this. Where am I? What am I supposed to do next? And I can't remember. I feel like you're just this is a drunken tale of you walking into a Long John Silver's or something. <laughs> <laughs> Never even happened. I love. It. All right, let's head to Brett, number five. All right, number five. I have um, a, a pretty unique game. Uh, maybe one of you guys has it on the list, I, but probably not. Um, I I was really hooked into The Lost Vikings. Oh. Um, this was a basically a, a puzzle game at its core where you're taking control of three Vikings who somehow get abducted by aliens. Um, you know, <laughs> the story is a bit uh, bit out there, but it's not really about the story because it's about the puzzles. And it was really cool because the all three of your, your Vikings that you control have different abilities, essentially. So um, like one of them shot arrows and the other one like you could use them as a, a step stool, <laughs> basically. And um, and all the stages were really well designed in that you, you really had to use all three of them to get through a stage properly. Um, and you'd have to, you know, you'd have to like use one of them to get one of the characters to a, a, a platform or something. And that character would have to like shoot a target and that would like open a door. And so the other guy could get, the third guy could get through and that guy would have to go do something to let the first guy through something. Um, and I, I, they're really, I can't think of any other game that was really similar to that in that area. You know, there's, there's certainly been like things, you know, puzzle type games like that since then. But um, yeah, that time that, that was like the only game I could think of that was like that. And it, I really enjoyed it. It, uh, you know, it definitely was something that, that got my brain working. And um, yeah, I don't know. It just, it was just a really cool idea. And uh it just stuck with me as the game that I really loved. Did you finish it? Yes. Nice. I know I played it when I was a kid and I just got really frustrated by it. I was like, this is too hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kudos this, to you. Did that game out also speak to you in the opening song? Did it like rap to oh, you or something? Yeah, I, I don't remember what the opening song funky is. In there, but. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a game I would like. I should play it sometime. Yeah. Kind of, it, so, so, it sounds like a kind of reminiscent of movie Lemmings. A little bit, or uh, yeah, okay. kind of, kind of like that. If you aren't paying attention to, you know, enemies that are on the screen, like your mm. your Vikings can get like got. Oh, mm. okay, yeah. That and fun note is like that's one of the first games by Blizzard Entertainment. So that's who it was. Uh, I was trying to think. Of that. Yeah, right. I knew it was somebody. Okay, number five to blue. Um. So you'll all my 
picks are going to be safe in terms of convention, but I'm going to go with Earthbound, um, mainly as probably one of my first experiences into the RPG genre. And I just love one, the funky soundtrack, uh, the fact that it breaks the fourth wall. The Blues Brothers are in it, and that's pretty great. Um, yeah, I, just, I love everything about Earthbound. I think it's really, really interesting. It's got a bee that you smack in the beginning. That looks pretty awesome. Uh, and it's got space aliens. It's just like a really, really interesting, you know, strange game that for HAL Laboratories, like, fantastic. So nothing more to say. However, uh, there is one thing I want to yeah. say about that game, though, that I didn't mention in my in my thing. One great convention of it that I haven't seen any other RPGs do since then is once you're strong enough to beat an enemy without mm. really worrying about it, just walk into the, him. You still walk into him and you get the experience and everything. It just the battle doesn't happen. Great concept. Every game should do that. Exactly. Yeah. When you're That'd just be a struggling, massive time saver. Right. And you go through a cave in Pokemon and you just immediately destroy a Zubat. Yeah, that would be the best outcome. Uh-huh. Are we still casting in English? What just happened right there? Yeah. It's a Zubat. Yeah. We're talking about Pokemon? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I forgot. I f- one, not to derail us here, but it should be an honorable mention. Uh, the game, I know a few, you mentioned Populous, Cody. Yeah. I would say if you wanted a mashup between like Castlevania and Populous, uh, the game Act Razor. Mm. I feel like it should be on the list. It's got uh, Yuzo Koshiro, who did the same soundtrack for Seats of Rage. Brilliant soundtrack, really neat game, and one that, like, if you have not ever played, you should definitely do. Okay, back to the top five. <laughs> I've never now played to, that one. Now to four, I believe. Well, yeah, now number four. four. All right, so number four. My number four will be shunned by most people listening to this if you're a PC gamer, but it is Sid Meier's Civilization for the Super Nintendo. Oh, Hudson just took off his glasses. Yes, that's right. Uh, I didn't have a PC that could play games growing up, so I don't even know how. I don't think I had even played this. I think I just bought a copy of this straight up. Uh, I don't know if I... <laughs> I must have known there was a reason I was going to like it, I guess, or something. But um, So I, I bought this and played nonstop. I mean, I love the first Civilization game. I loved it on the, the SNES. The controls were... I. I hear much more terrible on the Super Nintendo than they would have been on a PC, but nevertheless, you could figure out how to rotate through stuff pretty quickly if you played it enough times. The um, graphics were not great um, for even its time period, probably. The game itself, we probably don't need to comment too much on, but it was kind of broken where if you just got too powerful, then you could just basically run the map at a very very slow death march across the continent of moving 500 armies you know across <laughs> asia and just taking forever for that to happen um one of my most memorable times playing sid meyer's civilization was uh with my friend chad he had stayed over at my house for a sleepover and i don't know how but i got the brilliant idea that we could turn civilization into a two-player game So on the easy level, you start with two settler units. And so we both took one and passed the controller back and forth on where we wanted our initial cities to start. And then we would start kind of keeping track of whose land was whose, even though we were the same country on the same team. And he picked, I don't know, some spot by a river or something, and his town started to grow. And I, I think I had played like civilization more than he had. And so I was like, the fool here's what i'm gonna do so i looked around for a little bit longer and i found this spot which this is a you know a grid map game if you haven't played this before with little squares i found a square that had its so it'd be eight surrounding squares i think six or seven of them were mountain spaces which is like the super super heavy production and i'm like oh i'm gonna build the crap out of this and like have amazing armies and big cities with all these features totally forgetting despite all my games i had played of this that you couldn't produce any food in this city (laughs) so i spent probably the first three or four hours playing this game with just my one little mountain city (laughs) that could never grow and do anything at all so he had like developed half the continent and i was still with my one little tiny city which sucked (laughs) 
funny follow-up to this though we stayed the night and of course you can't you know your parents say you got to go to bed at some point so we went to bed but of course we left the game on pause because that's what you do and we woke up the next day and started to play for a little bit and i don't know why i did this but i like made some kind of comment in this little joking gesture to like reach towards the reset button because i thought it would be funny and accidentally really did hit the reset button and lost our game and it was fantastic so that was not great but i love the game in general uh many 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 hours spent playing civilization for the snes so i I most definitely remember that argument with chad (laughs) (laughs) it's probably gonna be on his tombstone could have finished (laughs) game of civilization (laughs) I all right. I, I definitely, okay. I really love. Just one quick thing. I yeah. I really love that game as well. I didn't have it on my list, though. I really loved it. I think the last time I ever played it, um, I I lost a battleship to an archer. <laughs> I remember you say that. I, I think I promptly quit. It's probably the last time I ever played that game. <laughs> That's why I don't play Age of Empires anymore for PC. I got into that for a little bit, and then. When I saw what the Chinese could do with their effing crossbowers, I was like, I am done with this shit. I'm just done. Anyway. All right, Mr. Hudson, you're four. So I would like to say that oh. I, I, I have nothing against civilization for the Super NES. I just always forget that it actually existed. I don't think I've ever actually played it, but I do love me some civilization. I recall once driving from where we went to college down to where me and another friend of ours live, which is Southern Michigan. It's about an eight hour drive. We had two computer. He had a laptop, I think. And I had a full desktop computer plugged into a power strip, plugged into my lighter. And we played (laughs) civilization on a network in my car from Marquette to Southeast Michigan. (laughs) We we had another person going with us and we made them drive. and, And I can't believe that, that we did that i feel like a jerk for that now but that was it's such a memorable trip like and this is the first one where like gandhi is coded to it was civilization two, civilization two for the pc mm-hmm. okay that's I the only one a, i've ever actually played so i think it's the first one where gandhi is just miscoded and he like will always declare <laughs> war on you <laughs> nice <laughs> was yeah. fantastic oh, yeah <laughs> um my 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 fourth uh is f-zero it is because and this was a really tough choice for me. I, just, I was switching between this and Earthbound and Pilot Wings, uh, Super Punch, all of them. Like, and I eventually went with F Zero because I think I just, in general, have had more fun playing it. And there's never been a racing game like it since. And it's because of that Mode Seven, as you were talking about, Cody, because it doesn't actually feel like you're turning your car. It literally feels like you're turning the track around your car. And none of the other F Zero games have ever felt like that since. And I really would wish that that Nintendo would make another game that has that feel to it. I don't think it would do well now, but I just really like it. The game has, a, again, a great soundtrack. Um, yep. I wish it had more tracks. There's only 15. It's the only game of that that's type that I can think of where there's, like, normally there's three basic courses, you know, like there's the beginner course, the middle course, the end course. And then once you complete all those, you get like the super course. It's that way in Mario Kart. It's that way in Super Punch-Out. But there's not extra courses when you get through with, uh, that's my biggest complaint about it. But Hmm. uh, uh, it's just a fun game. It is really fast. I I love the jumping, the the ramps, and the, um, it's just a it's just a very, very solid racing game that just doesn't have any other games that feel like it. It's just kind of its own thing. Have you heard of F-Zero X or F-Zero GX? But they don't feel the same. It feels more like you're turning your car through the course rather than you're turning the course around your car. I can't explain it in any other way. It, yeah. They feel like different games to me. What, what about Episode 1 Pod Racer? Ooh. Again, it still sort of feels like you're 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 turning your car. Uh, not necessarily. It has this weird sort of feel of you're turning the world around your vehicle, and it. it I don't know. There's some. There's some. Uh, I can't. I can never remember what the name of it is. There's some maze game that was an arcade game where a ball is basically the ball starts dropping and you you rotate the maze around it trying to get your ball through it. Yeah. Mm. It may be the irritating maze. I don't think that's the one, though. It's something I played on MAME. 
Um, but yeah, it's just a very unique feel. The other games in the series just don't feel like it to me. True. I mean, to be fair, I think Super Mario Kart does the same thing, but it's just not the same blistering it, pace. It, 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 is, it is the one that is the closest. And I think it has yeah. to do with that mode seven, essentially. Yeah. Because in both of them, you are essentially, that's what the graphics are doing is turning the world around you. I had never thought about it that way, but you're right. It is definitely a, a feeling when you're doing that. Just, yeah. Like rotating a marble in an analog sense. Yeah. Like marble maze. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're not manipulating the car that way. Yeah. All right. Let's head to Brett. All right. Well, uh, at four, I had a game that Cody mentioned earlier, and that is Mario Paint. <laughs> now, it might seem that at first, like, like, it's, it wouldn't be in anybody's top five, but um, I really did enjoy just the creativity that you could have with this game. And, you know, it was really cool. The Like having a mouse attached to your, your Super Nintendo was just so kind of weird and just unique. And, um, you know, even like the the computers that we had in our school at that time, I don't think even had mice <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this, this kind of new thing. like, what does this do? Um, but I, I really remember, I, I did a lot of stuff. I, um, you know, you, you could make pictures, you could make animations from your pictures, uh, you could make music, and you could actually, and correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think you could like mash all those things together. Like you could put your own music to your animations, I think. I'm pretty sure about that. I don't remember exactly. It's been. Like 20 years since I played it, but um, yeah, it was just really cool and unique. And it's just the amount of creativity that you could have with it uh, just made it replayable, you know, for however long you yeah, we want to. And uh, I remember like, so <laughs> we would, uh, my, my family, like every year would go to, um, to Drummond Island for vacation, do some fishing. And of course, I was brought my video games along because that's what I do. I, you know, go on vacation for your video games, and uh, <laughs> I see you I, camping. I, that's true. <laughs> I, I, would, I would sit there. I, I I really remember sitting there like at in the cabin playing uh, playing Mario Paint uh, for whatever reason that just sticks in my head. But it, it was just really just really cool. But not much you could do with it. Like my animations always end up with like stick figures getting smashed by rocks and stuff, but <laughs> turning into bloody smears. <laughs> But it it was pretty cool. I it, it definitely it has stuck with me through the years. That's fantastic. I'm just picturing you like driving somewhere to go to an island known for fishing and playing with the mouse to create your own Mario stuff. That's funny. All right, Blue, what's your number four? That's a follow up question, Brad. Did you make like awesome? Because you could do early versions of like chip tunes, right? You could. I've heard people. I think it was maybe a phenomenon when YouTube first started coming out, but people were making like you know, through the for- fire and flames. Uh, you can still find it. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Force yeah. on like yeah. Mario Paint. You just find any song turned into Mario Paint, which is I, cool. I think I, I, if I remember right, I found like where some other people had done that. They had, they had shown, like you get like a map of like, this is how to create a song with, you know, with the stuff. I, I don't, I don't think I ever did that myself, but I, I remember um, taking someone else's work and recreating songs in it. Here's my number four. If you, for those, can you just feel this coming through the microphone and the speaker? Is a incredible mashup of basically a dream team of gaming development, which is uh, Sakaguchi from the Square Final Fantasy series. You have Yuji Hori from Dragon Quest series, and you have Akira Toriyama who who made basically the Dragon Ball manga. Um, Chrono Trigger, I feel like, really set the tone of how any of the Square RPGs that came in the PlayStation era, you can just see how they're formulaic and, and created it after uh, Chrono Trigger. So, I mean, I think it is, everyone says that this is like the defining RPG, you know, people will get into pissing matches, but um, I think you'll, you'll be surprised. I love Chrono Trigger. I think it's cool that it has so many different endings. Um the sprites are amazing, and I just I think it's a really fun polished game, you know. And then uh, 
the soundtrack is incredible too because it's got you know some tracks that were created by Nobu Uematsu who did all the other Final Fantasy games but strangely like a lot of RPGs on my my top five which is not a genre I grew up with but I think it just you know came to appreciate them I don't think that they require much of a skill at all like in terms of uh comparatively like Ninja Gaiden objectively much more harder of a game than you know if you put the time in an RPG it's usually pretty foolproof and you can revert to saves as opposed to good point you, know, you you lose a lose it on a stage on Ninja Gaiden. You're starting over at the beginning, and uh, good luck. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's just more of like I like RPGs in the sense that you just solve a puzzle to kind of figure out what the boss mechanic might be in terms of how it gate keeps you from progressing in the game. But I think Chrono Trigger is just a fantastically done game. It, it is also one thing I wanted to mention about it is length for people at our age, mid thirties to mid forties you can play through Chrono Trigger in probably 10 or less hours. <laughs> like hmm. that makes it, that makes it a much, much, much nicer play. I friend got me these books. that are like almost like academic writing on, on these games. I have one on Chrono Trigger and one on another game, which is not going to be a surprise to anybody, but I'm not going to say it yet. All right. Sorry. I've still never played this game. It's I probably should at some point. I've, I've thought about it many times. It's only about 10 hours, really, actually. Yeah, but if you play through your first time, it'll probably be about, you know, you could, you could cruise through it. It would take you probably uh, maybe 30 hours if you want to explore more. It's one of those things that if you want to do the side quests, it's one thing. But if you're just pushing the narrative, yeah. you know, like Hudson said, you could probably do it about 10 hours, maybe, maybe 20 if you're doing it really leisurely. But then you can do a new game plus, and there's like 20 different endings, which makes yeah, it really, really That's one thing, and... and... Yeah, that's that's the one thing. If there's one thing that the other game I'm I'm going to talk about doesn't do that should do is that new game plus. Like there is, every game should have that along with the Earthbound mechanic I mentioned. Like, yeah, think about it. I'll think about it. Okay, let's go to number three. My number three has been mentioned already today, and it is SimCity. Yet another game that was a PC game that came out on the SNES, and I love this game. I probably played this game within the last two years, definitely since COVID came. So still to this day, try to like get to a Megapolis, which I have never been able to do, no matter how many strategy guys I read or different strategies I try. I don't know why I can't do it, but I just can't do it. Even with the million dollar code, I can't get to the 500,000 people. I don't know why. So it drives me still to this day. Every, every once in a while, I like to pick it up and pretend that I'm going to just play with regular rules and also be super successful at it and continue to build my huge city. And that usually lasts like two sessions. And then I'm like, this is impossible. Dumb tax rate. Anyway, but I like this one. I like the uh, disasters you can turn on and off. I like to just mess around with some cities um, and see what you can blow up. And the, the scenarios actually were fun. There were only six, but they were actually pretty fun too, to like try to beat each of the little scenarios whether it was a flood or nuclear meltdown that had happened or whatever the case was trying to clean it up and, and win i like the uh little special buildings you'd get every once in a while the casino or the amusement park or the large park or whatever the case was um i still don't know was this this probably came on like 92 so i mean this is 30 years i still don't know where you're supposed to put the industrial areas because those things will pollute no matter where you put it at it doesn't matter but anyway Loved all my time with SimCity. Spent many, 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 many days with this one as well. Like I said, uh, introduced it to my kids actually over COVID too, and they got into it a little bit also. So classic, it's simple, it's clean. It's just a lot of fun to do. And as Matt mentioned, um, for what is in the game, I mean, tune for tune, this is probably one of the more memorable music games for what is actually there in the game. It doesn't have a grand sprawling epic, but it has just those, you know, three, four, really iconic tunes for the different levels of your city. So Sim City, my number three. I don't know if everybody on this uh, podcast knows this, but the reason I got a smartphone was so that I could make every person I know have a unique Super Nintendo ringtone. <laughs> and Cody's is in fact. Oh. That's your ringtone. When you call me, that's what it does. I got to call you more often than I guess. <laughs> this will be explored in the rest of this episode, I hope, for all of us. Well, I, 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 
I haven't updated my list in a while, so I need to make sure that sort of the uh, blue and bread are in there, and I will, I will, depending <laughs> on their their lists, I will make sure that that, that they are appropriate. I mean, like you got like a, I don't know, probably another hour to cook this up here. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of just want him to like have, I don't know, can we just get like thousand people to add him quickly just to see what he comes up with by the end of it all? Hey, I need to know what your number one picks are before I can pick songs. Though. That's oh. that's Im- that's important. Does that mean um, mine's going to change uh, then? No, you're still, you're still, still that. that. Yeah, that's that one's just iconic. It's, it. it makes right. me think of so, Cody. Should have went with um, be more like bison dying or Sagat <laughs> dying. <laughs> you win, <laughs> you lose. Considering the tournament, yes, probably that's the case. <laughs> um, uh, my number three. We're we're gonna probably, I will assume, talk about this uh, in somebody else's top five. Certainly not Cody's because he listed it as his. But anyway, it's all the link to the past. Um, I don't know what to say. It's just it. It's the reason I wanted a Super Nintendo. <laughs> like I I I actually like I remember before I got the game, having dreams about playing it. I can't say that for any other game in history. Like, I wanted to play this that bad. Um, and it didn't disappoint um, at all. I I remember the first time I was going through it, the first time I beat Aghanim, like, I was surprised a little bit that the game continued. Because I'm like, oh, I got all the three, got the Master Sword boss. Oh, crap, there's more game! <laughs> um the bosses are all quite interesting. It it's still unlike the later Zelda games. It doesn't it 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 does it's not all hinged on the puzzle aspect. There's still just fighting aspect as well. Like it's more of an action puzzler rather than a puzzler actioner. But that's again preference. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. Like I finally a couple of years ago finally went through and got absolutely everything for the first time. Got all the hearts. Hmm all that stuff it's just a i don't know lots of hidden shit to find lots of stuff to do it's it's like zelda but it's just better than zelda it's, i don't know it's my favorite zelda game that was fantastic i mean blue said earlier might be objectively the best super nintendo game probably de- depends on your genre preference but you know if you're into that like you said puzzly action. remember how i said that everybody has has a um ringtone uh at my f- former job that i left re- fairly recently um i had gotten a new boss like a year before that and i'm like so uh this is weird but like i have to give you a ringtone in my phone what kind of what kind of super, super nice games do you like so, well, i really like the zelda game and i'm like i don't have a Ze- like i made all my bosses have boss music <laughs> so so he's now the boss music even though i'll probably like never boss. get another call from him but he, he's 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 the boss zelda boss music zelda figured, link of the past boss i figured it'd be more like when you damage the boss it's like well, i have to use or songs not exploding I, I, I want actual <laughs> music as opposed to yeah you know, it should zelda. be clear you you left the job right they didn't fire you after you asked the boss that question <laughs> oh no no i was there for almost a year more than that yeah <laughs> He gave you his answer, but in the back of his mind, he was thinking, this guy's on the way out already. Trust me. <laughs> Weird. All right, Brett, you're number three. All right. Number three, I had um, kind of a, uh, a somewhat groundbreaking game, and that is Star Fox. Mm. Um, being, I, I know there's something, there probably was something like somewhat before that, but it was the first game that really kind of felt like a 3D world like you're actually flying through a 3d space um though in in truth it really wasn't it was just kind of a, a, a play you know just a the way they use the the because po- everything was just polygons and there was no like rounded surfaces or anything that you're you're used to seeing in, in every other game and i it just the you know the the use of all those those sharp lines and the shading of them they were able to create you know an effect of of a 3d space but it really really wasn't if you like pay attention like things in the like objects like buildings in the side just kind of move past you don't you can't like fly around them or anything like that ever they're just like moving past you but still um it, it really felt kind of revolutionary like oh my gosh this is really cool to see and um i'd always been a, a really big fan of of flying type simulators i, I had um the top gun game for the nes and uh put a bunch of time in that and you know so 
this is it was really you know really entertaining the the characters were were cool because they had personalities you know they're like each each character in the game you like there's the uh the funny guy and then there's like the serious guy and then there was um you know it, it just it you really kind of all felt you know it went together well it felt good it had like a you, know, you, you felt like you were a part of this this team and yeah, I guess I don't know what else to say about that, but it, it was it was just really enjoyable. It was just kind of a new thing that really kind of I don't it just it just brought something new and exciting. Yeah, I, I like that someone didn't make my list, but I think it's really interesting just from a technical standpoint, like you said, Brett. The if you've ever watched the uh, game series on it's a limited series on Netflix, but they talk about uh or less like a British software company called Argonaut, like figured out how to do 3D graphics or did, did something similar. And then they worked with this team, basically flew them to England, um, locked them in like a basement and then like built <laughs> Star Fox together as a collaboration. So like, it's really cool. And uh, I just like the backstory of the creation of that game. And I think it's a really cool franchise that, you know, as a whole, like Star Fox, probably should get more attention nowadays but it's you know one that nintendo has kind of rested its laurels on unfortunately yeah uh, and kind of like f-zero they haven't really made a game it, it, star fox 64 sort of felt like the original one but since then they've all been sort of like weird different genres that aren't really like star fox yeah i think I that's like, part of the issue they just need to make a new star fox game like i that, mean they have but it's just not as been they haven't been as good like i feel uh, like okay. just star fox 64 i feel like is the the defining Star Fox game for me. Mm. And then there's like the GameCube ones were not very good. And then there was a one on the Wii U um, that I, I didn't particularly care for. But love right, it did, because did. it was a, you know, outside of like Star Wars Arcade, right? I feel like it was the first 3D game that I, you know, experienced on the Super Nintendo or like at, for Sega Genesis, Virtual Racing was the first polygon based game that it felt was rendered. Any favorite tunes from uh, Star Fox there, Brett? I don't think I have any Star Fox ringtones. <laughs> I don't think I have your number in my phone either. So I'd have to double yeah, check I don't that. Know but... to. Um, I, I, I don't actually remember the music. It doesn't, oh, the, man. You need to look up, the, sticks out to me, but... look up the music. Asteroids and Space Armada. Choice. Space <laughs> Armada is my favorite. <laughs> Will do. Interesting. So Star Fox for Super Nintendo got the Super FX chip, and then Star Fox for 64 was the first with the Rumble Pack. So it used to get some love by Nintendo, and then I don't know. All right. Blue, what's your three? Three is actually one I'm playing through right now, and much oh. to probably the delight of Hudson, I am playing Final Fantasy 3, which would be six. So, because um, I had feel like there's a lot of foreshadowing to come i uh, really enjoy it i think i may obviously it's ranked higher than crown of trigger for me which i th- think um was a, a debate that matt and i were having as to which one was more i think just the mechanics of three are much more polished than crown of trigger um it's clear to see how formulaic uh, the final fantasy series became and i think this is really the template for it and so lots of uh similar themes i really like some of the Esper magic system. Um, and so I, I won't go too in depth here, but I, I'm really enjoying it. I haven't beat it yet, but I think just the character development, uh, some of the mode seven is really interesting to me. Um, and yeah, I'm probably, uh, I feel like Hudson, please, please, please spare me the spoilers. Oh, in terms oh of the yeah, I, I will. I just, um, how far are you? What, I the- am, let's see, I'm, I just um, about to go maybe to the empire i just found out that uh tara is an an esper or went okay. up to the tower and found her there oh wow uh i yeah i'm gonna try to avoid spoilers for you when it gets to me as best I mean, as i can there's a big I, one there's a real big I, one. I know i know there's a world of ruins so i mean by okay that, okay yeah, <laughs> <don't>, <laughs> all right all right at this point i feel like you know it's been 30 years you can just uh I know that some pieces are coming, mainly because I bought the guidebook. Did you do so, the opera? Did you get through the opera? I just did the opera, yeah. Okay. Pretty sweet. Yeah, the, uh, the aria for that was actually the, the um, entrance music at my wedding. 
It was a nice strings nice. version of it. It was really pretty. No one, every, everybody thought it was. No one knew how nerdy it actually was. Nerd. <laughs> is it? Is it your wife's ringtone? Yeah. Actually, actually, yes, it is. But it's. Ah. It, but the the actual aria is is someone else's, but Celis's theme, which is also the aria. It's a different version of it. Is yeah. is Allie's? So yeah, yeah. This game, this game's great. I think. Uh, you know, I think I prefer it to Chrono Trigger just for the sense of how polished it is. Maybe, maybe I'll feel differently if the you know narrative gets drowned out or you know goes down the shitter. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty amazing so far. Nice, nice. I have a feeling what your top two are going to be. By the way, I, I, I just have a guess. <laughs> so, all right, we'll keep moving here. Number two is all around. My number two is a game that I. At first glance, probably wouldn't think I had spent that much time on, but when you do the math, um, this I don't, yeah, I don't, I, Super I Black don't, Bass got it. Yeah, no, that, I liked Black Bass. I never played Super Black Bass, but I liked Black Bass. Uh, I don't know how many hours I've put into this. All I know is your your clue is when COVID hit, it affected many things in the world, and I was missing one thing that I no longer had that I normally had, and so I had to simulate it myself at home here. And uh, Brett has mentioned this one already. It's Ken Griffey Jr. presents Major League Baseball. Oh, Brett. The uh, game with, as mentioned here, all the fake teams and uh, the, the thematically named players, which are always hilarious. But I love this game. It had just, I don't know, like I still wish there was a baseball game that had these controls, but just a modern roster. And I would probably buy that every year when they put it out it's just so simple but the controls are just so tight in this game like base running was simple Uh, catching the ball and running around the field was really simple throwing to the bases was simple batting was simple pitching was simple kept track of a few stats that would be something they could modernize maybe have like a more full um, stat roster that you go through and have more categories for batters and pitchers but this was great it had all the um stadiums at the time which was kind of revolutionary you know you could i was like playing baltimore because i liked the way their outfield looked with the big warehouse out there in the right field and uh, boston which obviously since burned down probably wow okay no you're well yeah that's well most of them probably are not the same i mean they go through <laughs> stadiums so quick nowadays it's crazy but now we have preparation h arena but that's, uh, <laughs> all right that was the movie basketball i apologize that was just <laughs> Didn't it have the home run derby mode because I feel like that was like, um, or is that the one that came after? I don't know if it had a home a couple, run derby. I feel like that was like I just um, have a snapshot I, of playing. Kind of I want to say maybe that was the sequel. It, I think it did have a home run derby. Did it have a yeah. home run derby? Okay, I know it had exhibition and season, and I think you could do just the World Series if you wanted to. I, I think it was like um, you you get like 20 pitches and just yeah. how many, how many oh, you can knock maybe, out. Yeah. I think it was like nine. No, yeah. I can't remember, but I remember like staying at a friend's house and I was like, Oh, we're going to go somewhere. But like, let's quickly fire up the home run derby mode and see who wins, you know, this like, one, um, this one was also fun just because I like, I like to do the season mode whenever I play a baseball game or a sports game. And this one was also nice because I, I believe correctly, you could choose like three or four different lengths for the season. Like you could do the full season yes. or like a 30 game yeah. or whatever. So that was kind of nice too. I always did the full game, of course, but um, side note on this one, I have to share another story. It's not about this game, but it's probably not a game that's ever going to be featured in an episode here. So when I had the Ken Griffey Jr. winning run game for the 64, uh, my well, two, two stories and one story here. I played it with um, my roommate sophomore year, Brandon. Matt, you remember but good old Brandon. We played a, a guy. A co-season, which was the first time I had done that with someone. So we were both playing a season together with our own respective team. We'd have to trade back who played what game and try to get through the whole thing. And uh, one night I came home and he was in like the first round of the playoffs with the Tigers or somebody. And I was like, hey, I thought we were in May. And he was like, yeah, I just simmed the whole season. I made the playoffs. He didn't make it. That's tough. And I was like, that's cool. I put in like a hundred hours on my team, but that's cool. So that's gone. So that was funny. Number one, but number number two, I've always remember this one too. Somewhere there exists a picture of this. And I don't know if it's like a actual old school picture or if it actually it's a digital file someplace, but I was playing, I don't even know what team I had, but I was playing like against the Arizona diamondbacks 
And as every sports game, especially baseball games do, when like that player gets tired in the game, they sub them out and put in a new player. And so the pitcher for the Diamondbacks, I had just like shellacked and they put in another pitcher whom I promptly killed. And they put in another pitcher whom I killed. And, you know, they're pitching like an inning, two pitches each. Well, they only have like 10 pitchers in the game. So they got to the point where they were on their last pitcher and they couldn't sub this guy out. And I just ran up the score like 165 to three or something, because like the guy was just throwing like 40 mile an hour slow balls over the middle of the plate. And it was just amazing. But anyway, I love this game. Yes. Yeah, is another King Griffey Jr. I love it. Oh, and we have to give a shout out to the uh, uh, announcer as well, uh, whose name I'm, I'm forgetting. Help me out here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I can't think of his name now. This is terrible. The guy from Seattle. It's in the Macklemore song. They write the whole song about him. What's this dude's name? Oh, my God. Who's the... Somebody help me out here. You're asking the wrong guy. Sorry, listeners, I got to get this on here, though. Although I did remember in college, <laughs> was able to correct someone on, on saying that Howard Cosell called the Tigers game. And I'm like, it's Ernie Harwell, dude. Ernie Harwell. You don't know what you're talking about. I am totally Good. blanking. Dave Niehaus? Thank you, Dave Niehaus. Yeah. Yes, Dave Niehaus, the Seattle guy, legendary announcer there. But he had all the the great lines, the, you know, the boom shock a lock. Well, that was actually NBA Jam, but he had the rye bread and mustard grand salami time and all of the all of the great things that he would shout out during the game so well that and too what like the historical pieces like nintendo tried to buy the seattle manners at one point that's a good point yeah nintendo's a seattle basically a seattle owned franchise but uh because that was the whole piece of why they you know licensed ken griffey the griffey yeah i think that's really interesting of you know from a historical perspective yeah it's a good point Good point. Last well, my number two, Ken Griffey Jr., Major League Baseball, Mr. Hudson. All right. Uh, number two is, I'm guessing one that will come up later for one person, but it's uh, Super Metroid. What can one say about Super Metroid? It is, I would say, one of the top two um, grand granddaddies of the Metroidvania. That and, and Symphony of the Night, you take those two games. If you like the Metroidvania genre, they're the two you have to play. They're just required playing, I think. Um, Super Metroid is the first game I ever specifically tried to get through without dying under a certain time limit and get 100% of everything, which I managed to do at two hours and 18 minutes. Oh, my God. And then my brother beat me like, like a half hour because <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I I don't know what else. The, the controls in that are super tight. The level design is super tight. Whenever you get an item, you have to use that item immediately so you learn how to use it. Like you get the you get the ice beam. You have to use the ice beam to freeze enemies to get out of the room. You get you get the grapple beam. You have to use the grapple beam to get out of it. Like it does a really good job. Like it doesn't it doesn't say this is the grapple beam and this is how you used it. It like literally just tutorials you in the game to use that stuff. Um, my nephew gives me an unending amount of shit because I can't do some of the cheats in it, like the mock ball. I have no idea. I can't do it. He's like, it's just like a Haruka in Street Fighter. And I'm like, no, I, 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 I can't do it. So I don't know. It's just, just a, a great game. Also, again, excellent music, but I find it interesting. My brother and I will both rank this game probably in our top five, but I would rank like the music and I like all the music in it, but he would say like the Brinstar depths, like the doom, 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 doom. That's the one he likes. I like the more adventuresome upper Brinstar theme. So um, this, this is your brother's ringtone is what I've inferred from this one. No, no. Um, <laughs> He was at the start. So my brother's ringtone is actually Sabin's theme from Final Fantasy VI. It's the brothers. Ah, I see. Yes. And, I, and, and my sister's ringtone is Shala from Chrono Trigger, the sister. Yeah, it's I'm there's no words to describe how stupid and dorky I am. I love it. I'm, and I imagine <laughs> your your brother just pummeling people. All yeah. The time. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I don't know what else to say about Super Metroid, except like I remember planning a route through it so that I could try to get through it in like under three hours without dying and get everything. Um, strangely enough, the part when I went through it that I'm most worried about dying in is either 
the Krakenmeyer boss because I'm particularly bad at doing that for some reason. And if you run out of missiles, it can be really hard. It's the one where you have to keep hitting him. You can't kill him. You just have to keep knocking him back until he falls into the lava. Mm. I have come dangerously close to dying there multiple times because it's, I'm just not good at that boss. So, hmm. All right. Number two, Brett. All right. Two I had. Um, a game, so there was many games that you know you'd play with friends or whatever, but if, I feel like this game was like the first game that you get people together because it was like a party game, and that's Super Mario Kart. Mm. Um, you know, and certainly you had plenty of racing games before this came out, but they were all just kind of like actual like racing, like simulation type stuff, more or less. <laughs> and and this was a racing game where you know, you had these crazy power-ups and items and you had like speed boosts and you had like, you could jump over things. And, um, you know, the, the, the main game part of it was, was fun and unique just on its own. But then you had this whole multiplayer battle mode, which was amazing. Um, you know, it's certainly when you, when you got into the, the 64, it, the 64 version was, was way better than, you know, leagues above this, but for the time, it was was really cool just to to run around in these stages and like trying to fight your friends and knock off their balloons and um, yeah, it was just like a, a whole new thing that was it was just fun. It was just just pure fun, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I could say much more about that. But it just but the the it really was the battle mode that just kind of like brought this game to the front for me. It's just really really enjoyable. You you also bring up something that because I mentioned F Zero earlier, the biggest flaw about that game is that it did not have a multiplayer. It, mm. That's that's the one thing that that I thought Mario Kart did exceptionally better than F Zero was the multiplayer. It F Zero misses that completely, but yes, yes. Uh, SNES Mario Kart also had you picked the driver right, which was kind of I don't know if that was unique for the time, but. Isn't Probably that... was the first, yeah, first racing game where I actually like pick who you are. And I like to, you know, because the later games, like the cart you chose was more important, I felt like. But in the, in the early games, it was like, I want the fat Donkey Kong or the super skinny fast dog Koopa Troopa. I mean, there were, right, you yeah. were technically picking your racer in F Zero as well, but you were more picking the car because no yeah. one really, no one knows who those characters inside are mm. except freaks it's like just... me. Who do we. <laughs> Who are we, and how do we really know that? I feel like just ask existential questions about X Zero <laughs> in Mario Kart. Yeah, love it. All right, number two, blue. Uh, so I mean, honestly, I think hands down, uh, it's already been mentioned, but Super Mario World. I think up there between Super Mario Three, Super Mario Brothers Three on uh, NES, maybe edges it out as far as being the best Mario game. But my goodness, I think there's as much as I love Sonic, I think, you know, Sonic is really just about going fast and whether or not the platforming is not, you know, clearly Sonic, you just go fast, but like the platforming isn't that polished and pretty arrow prone, but Super Mario World, like it is perfection as far as uh, level design, Cody mentioned, you know, unlocking pieces that branched paths to, you know, you go even to the star world, those things are just really cool. And then the final boss you know, with Bowser is just really neat. Um, you know, easily, easily one of the best Marios that, if anything, it comes close to it. Maybe a uh, 3D version would be Super Mario 64 or Super Mario Odyssey, but easily one of the top, if not, you know, you're splitting hairs at the point where you're trying to figure out what is the best Mario game. And Super Mario World has to be in the conversation there. Yeah, for sure. Right. All right. And um, time for the intermission. <laughs> and again, I, I'd always say if 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 there were a game that had the world of Super Mario World and the world interactivity and the extra suits of Mario Three, that would be the greatest Mario game ever. And I don't know why they just why won't they give that to us? It's what are you, what are you saying? You just want you just want Super Mario World with like the little item shops and like that type it, of thing. Yeah, Items that you can get, like extra suits. Super Mario okay. World had had the, the 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 mushroom, the feather, and the fire flower. That's it. Like, 
And the star. Come on. The star, but that, but that's um, it's, it's a not star. a suit. It's not a okay. It does have a star, but <laughs> but it doesn't have the Hammer Brothers suit. It doesn't have the Takuni the, the suit. It doesn't have the frog suit. Like all these, and it also has like things like like little hammers that you can use in the in the overworld. I just thought that Mario World missed that sort of stuff. You got Yoshi sure. and the man that that is a football dude. Just charges that yeah. Charge and chuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, Hudson interrupted my Donkey Kong underwater theme intermission music. I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's his that's his ringtone he has for you. I can't believe you yeah. did that. Yeah. Oh, do- I- okay. In- intermission, Donkey Kong Country intermission. If that's your number one, I'm totally wrong with everything you picked, by the way. You don't love that? I, mean, I feel like never ex- it, Donkey Kong Country just again I wasn't into linear games so it didn't jump at me. Oh, it's not linear by any means. Have you ever tried to Okay, you have convinced me. I will play Donkey Kong Country. Oh, it's yeah. great. It's fantastic music it. also. Yeah. Do you yeah. just make that into all of our ringtones by the end of the Yes. Okay. Um, yes. maybe my next podcast I'll have it all. I like it. Oh. All right. I think we are somewhere near number one at this point. So let's pick up here. My number one is uh, a game that has been mentioned tonight. You're not going to get a surprise here for me at number one, sadly. And uh, again, in terms of crisp, clean controls, this is up there. In terms of simplicity, this is up there as well. This is, you know, a game formula that has been patterned many times since this game has been out but i don't think anybody has done it as well and if you tried to get me to play a game similar to this game today i probably would give it maybe one play and just quietly put it down and say that's the end of it all um but like a lot of my nostalgic choices i have here these are going to be triggered by memories i have so i wouldn't say this is the best snes game but i'm going to say for tonight at least on my list it's my top favorite snes game And that is over Matt Hudson's left shoulder, Super Street Fighter 2 is what I'm choosing as number one. Just the simplicity of two friends having a battle, going at it, and uh, seeing who could win. Also probably got some points for me because this was a rare game. Uh, Not the Super version, but the probably regular version and then uh, Turbo in the arcades i would actually pay money to play which once i started having consoles as we talked about earlier i probably paid less money at arcades but this is one i'd always think quarters and still today if i was some place and they had one i'd probably throw a couple quarters in and just see what i could do the extra four characters in this one uh dj and cammy and t hawk and who's the fourth one oh Fee long by long um add the roster up a little bit simple but it's a lot of fun and uh hudson was referring to earlier how did we start that exactly? I don't know. <laughs> I don't either. Somehow we got this idea, though, that Hudson and I were going to create a grid with all 16 characters, uh, with me playing each of the characters against him playing each of the other characters. Well, actually, all and mirrors as well. So you got 16 times 16. Is that all it is? No, 16 times 16 times 16, right? No, I think it's just 16 times 16. You got 16 characters. Each one you can play 16 times. Yeah, I guess it is. Like 256 16. matches. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're, about, we're about halfway through. It's about halfway through, <laughs> and, and Cody is ahead by a sizable margin. I've, all, I've often said, and, I, and I'm going to stick to this, if we got together once a year and played like three or four battles and then stopped, <laughs> I would probably easily come ahead. But what happens is I have a very predictable play style. So once <laughs> it works really well, the first couple of fights, but once he catches kicks into it, then I, I, I have a very big problem. So, yes. So I love this one. It's real simple. I have sold almost all of my Super Nintendo games at this point, but I think I still have a copy of this floating down in the basement, just in case I ever need to break it out for situations. So, so if you're halfway <laughs> through and you do four matches a year, and you'll have to do... You, it'll take you 32 more years to get this accomplished. So. Let, me see, let me see if I can get it here. We got it. I think we can... The other it's thing is you, hang, have to, you got to pick who you want here. Wall. So, um, For some reason, reason the last time we got I was together. really excited about my Guile versus your Chun-Li that I won. I don't know why. It's circled <laughs> and I wrote awesome. That feels <laughs> definitely <laughs> an Ewan-Dowish. <laughs> awesome there you go 
I have no idea. Uh, I love it. Good stuff. I'll, I'll show you my Chun Li if you show me your guile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care particularly about either of those two characters, though. I'm not good with either of them. I don't enjoy playing that. I don't know. They're both fine. <sighs> anyway, my number one, Super Street Fighter Two, which uh, is is better than the other versions of the game as well. So there we go, uh, Mr. Say, Hudson. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's it's Final Fantasy VI. I mean, you you knew that. I mean, it's, I don't know what else that the story is is just freaking epic the music is freaking epic every character has their own musical themes which when i first did the phone thing that was what gave me the idea like ooh, which one of my friends is going to be cyan and which one's going to be edgar and all this and the other you know i just had to yeah you know <laughs> that's what started the phone thing but um like i said my friend gave me these books that are like almost like academic writing about these games and this one pointed out something that was very obvious to me, but I never really thought about it. And that's just the way the game is designed. It's designed with 14 different playable characters that all have their own stories and they're all sort of weaving together. Um, but the first half of the game is specifically designed around the villain being the central character. So it's everything he does and everything that happens around him. In that way, it's, it's weird but the game is actually structured like infinity war <laughs> like and it actually ends the same way too like the first half of the game is infinity war it's it's kefka getting all this power kefka setting up the power and kefka destroying the world that's mm-hmm. act 1 and act 2 just like end game a little it's bit spoiler, is spoiler, spoiler, spoilers spoilers <laughs> no, no i mean you know what's going to happen you just you just have to it's about you, collecting all you, your finding all your you friends in the game you do win the game, but, but it's, it, it's all about collecting all your friends. The one thing I'm going to say is this, this blue, and, and this is not a spoiler. This is a, you don't want to have to go back and redo this when you get to the end. At the end of the floating continent, it's going to say, do you want to leave or wait for the time to run out? Wait for the time to run out. Otherwise, a character dies and you cannot get them back. Just like very... uh cryptic as if i'm watching it is they wanted to kill off a character but weren't sure how to do it and didn't want to do it permanently so um i feel like you're telling me to swing away as if i'm watching signs yeah just i mean it gets it gets pretty obvious later it almost it actually the first couple times you say wait then it eventually says i want to get off this floating continent or i gotta wait for so and so (laughs) so wait for so and so that's my only advice about that um I don't even know know what what to say. But it's just this story is just it's just so good. It's it's literally like the Lord of the Rings to me. <laughs> like, hmm. um, I mean, it um, is it is accurate in that sense that it counts your steps. Which we're talking the hobbits, they took a lot of steps. They did probably, take a probably lot. more steps than an actual human would yeah. throw and that, throw a ring into a volcano. Uh, it also just it it, it it also has a really great. Um, setting it's very steampunkish it's not like full fantasy but it it like has slightly industrialized cities with like mechs essentially like hmm. i don't know and the characters are really customizable like they all have their one little special ability but if you want to make them a fighter or want to make them a magic user you know you can basically do what you want what you want with them they're very open for the most part some are a little harder to customize than others cow um but you know yeah this is what i was mentioning it's like the uh junction system in like final fantasy 7 is much much more difficult than the esper system mm-hmm. and how you learn spells like i think yeah the fact that the espers are tied to your magic and everyone can learn everything is really neat yeah so yeah all right i, I don't have a whole lot more to say about it if, if you've never played it you should play it it's yeah what are it. you doing go get it now cody fleming i know it'll take like take like forever to play but if anybody is interested i'd be willing to play a little bit with them over zoom maybe for like the next 10 years that'd be a way to do it <laughs> gotta not schedule when we get our four matches in a street fighter every year though just to be clear <laughs> yeah okay sounds good all right well i am intrigued by these last two because i don't know where they're gonna go so brett what's your number one all right well number one um I don't know that I can add much because uh, the descriptions from uh, from Cody and Blue pretty summed it up pretty well. But number one for me is is Super Mario World. Um, I I it just feels like you know with Nintendo it, always the the Mario games kind of are 
it, it feels like Nintendo. That's what Nintendo is. It's it's it just feels like Mario. Um, but it something about this game. It just it's as close to perfection for a platformer as as I think you could get. Just about it, you know. It it is just it's simple. But it's fun. The controls are are great. Um, I maybe uh, I guess you guys didn't really talk about the the graphics so much, but the, the graphics are just really clean and crisp and vibrant, and and everything just just feels good to just walk around. It's, it you know it feels a bit um, you know like cartoony, but in a good way. You know it. it you know they they got all these extra pixels that they could use from from the from the original Nintendo and and they they use them wonderfully. Um, everything just just it just feels like a great you know, world to walk around in. And um, you know you had Yoshi, which was like, super cute, and uh, this is like great little companion that you you know you can kick off the edge of a platform if you wanted. To. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I can really add much more, but it. Uh, it's just a great game that it, it, I think it's probably my my wife's favorite Super Nintendo game as well. Um, we play it together every once in a while until we we both just get frustrated with it, and <laughs> put it down. But but we enjoy it while we do it. So yeah, that's my number one. It's making me want to play it again. Now. I think everybody else has put this in their list, but me. Um, so I want to ask all of you briefly: Have you ever played the sequel or tried to play the sequel? Because the sequel is rigging weird, and I have not. <laughs> I've never managed to get into it. I've tried multiple times. Oh, uh, the one with baby, baby Mario. Yeah, you're like Yoshi's Yoshi Island. Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't think I played that one. No, it's weird. And so I mean, we're, we're 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 talking about a game. It's a successor to a game that has football players guarding like goalposts <laughs> for some reason that are your enemies. I, <laughs> I never played it either. I know the art style is wacky. It looks like Mario Paint. It looks like someone made it in Mario Paint. Yeah, that's a good, good call. No, I never did. I, Mar- Super Mario World, yeah, everything. I mean, sounds stupid, but even like stages that had the like fences that you like smacked and then rotated to the other side on, like I was like, whoa, I'm, up, I'm behind the thing. <laughs> little little deets here. So I don't know. I was I have not been keeping track enough to come up with an aggregate number one here, but let's. I think that's got to be in contention. Let's see what Blue's got number one. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to tip the scales here, but um, Link to the Past is my my number one. I think it is, one, it's the first Super Nintendo game that I actually beat, you know, on my own. Uh, and it actually was my introduction to uh, the Zelda series as a whole. Um, I, I just love it. I mean, I feel like people have talked about why they love it. Um, it's, I think... The only detractor is that you could like screw up the hearts if you were collecting the pieces in the wrong order. If you, you know, there's like a three quarter piece here, there's a quarter piece there. And if you didn't do the math right with your uh, fractions, then you're kind of screwed out of a total piece of heart. But, you know, it is like Hudson said, you, you get the three pendants, you go to get the master sword, which is fantastic. Like that's an awesome cinematic moment where you yank the master sword out of the earth and all these bunnies and things like go, go ape shit for you uh and then yeah then you go to the dark world i feel like the old uh dark world theme is fantastic should preface by saying like the setting is amazing you you wake up your uncle's gone and then he's he's murdered in a hallway for you you grab his sword and that starts your tale like the man that's pretty dark um and i just you know loved it you that was where i saw how Graphically, the Super Nintendo is just such an advance, like the lightning crashing, the raining, um, just the isometric graphics, not isometric, but just the the way the world scaled. um, And the first time you hit the overworld and you hit the iconic Zelda theme, you know, blew me out of the water. So I think that that is hands down my favorite uh, Zelda game, you know, close to Ocarina of Time, maybe uh, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy, but clearly a, a solid solid entry that, that defines the zelda series uh, super good games I, uh... and now now you still want the water intermission music or, or i don't have someone for the dark world yet <laughs> I, I was also thinking maybe the lost woods theme 
would be a good no. ringtone for you? No, I mean the '64 Lost Lost Woods theme is much better than. Oh you know. boy! Yeah, we're, we're getting stuff. Look at the yeah. time, boy! <laughs> <laughs> it is that that is a good good. The Lost Woods for the '64 is amazing, but I'm using to 16-bit tone. So it's yeah. weird how like I consider myself a very musical person, and you all clearly know video game music far more than I do. And you're when you're all talking about it here. Truly, I think I'm with Hudson. Like, if something evokes nostalgia as far as a game or what really defines a game, it has to be the soundtrack on top of it, just creates the ambiance. Like, if the immersion factor really just depends on how well the soundtrack is composed. And just, I mean, we haven't even really talked about it, but just the technical feat of sound engineering on these consoles. I mean, I think it's just, you know, there's great it's it's cool when you see like yuzo kushira i mentioned it before but you know they do there was like a streets of rage concert where they're just playing streets of rage music and all these fans are going nuts and just like okay that's when you have like a cultural phenomenon so technically you push the limits and yeah i'm with hudson i love game music so maybe that's a future one of like what are the best best game game soundtracks yeah wow the deep dive I'd have to, I, I would for you guys be, for me it I would, would be, be be there but uh wow that would be difficult for me top five like from any oh okay yeah I, I haven't uh, even said it yet don't get there yet who knows Could I mean I'm already, would... I'm already having palpitations though yeah that would be really hard wow a good challenge though three of the five would clearly be from the Ness game north versus south but the other two would be open for debate so what was the score then I mean I feel like we all had Hudson didn't have Super Mario World in the top. I didn't keep track five. of the aggregate. We had three Mario Worlds. What else was was anything else in the top? Because a couple of Zeldas. A couple of Zeldas. Um, yeah, the, who had Cody? Zelda wasn't in your top five. It was my six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Same for me. Blue and I yes. both had FF six. I almost had Chrono Trigger as well. I I loved them both, but um, I threw I swapped it for F Zero at the last minute. I think Brett yeah, was maybe. Mario World your second. Um, Mario World was first. Mario Kart was second. Oh, Mario World was first. I'm surprised yeah. no one else picked Kart because that is an excellent game. The one I forgot to mention, but I think that makes it the. You know, it's got to be it. Then. Yeah, I think that's it. Super Mario World. <laughs> so no, 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 no one else picked Terra Enigma. <laughs> really? <laughs> so does that mean that we all just had the best nostalgia for Super Mario World, that it's that great of a game, or that Nintendo peaked with the build the package game that came with the system and just went downhill after that. Well, I, I, it is a very good game, and I played it a ton. I mean, we all played it a ton because it came with the friggin' system. Yeah. And it was an excellent game. That's fair. I mean, it, it's. I don't think that that's an uncharacteristic judgment of it, though, Cody. Like, if you're going to put a pack-in game... You might as well lead with your heavy hitter. I yeah, mean, that's true. Donkey Kong it also Country, made sense. Be- yeah. Donkey Kong Country was also a pack in. I think there was maybe a couple other Super Mario All Stars. I'm surprised we didn't bring that up, but that's mm. a really good one. We, we, we extinguished this one. Somebody said beforehand that this was a system that was maybe really top heavy with like the heavy hitters. You know, maybe you take the Big Ten or whatever. And certainly we saw those on many people's lists tonight. Yeah. And without a hands down, I mean, it's not even an argument. The, Sega Genesis pales in comparison to how polished and well-rounded the library is. So, I mean, top five is worth, I think the top five on the Super Nintendo are better than the top five on the Sega Genesis, hands down. So, I yeah. don't even need to disagree about that, but. Yeah, I'd probably say that too. Yeah. Even though I, I really, really loved a lot of my, my Genesis games. but Same. Yeah, that's by no means. Not not this in the system because I love it. Yeah, but yeah, I'd be curious if we ever do a Genesis one. I have not played a lot of them, but I definitely know what number one is, and I wouldn't share that with anybody tonight. So just in case. I'm surprised that WrestleMania didn't come up for you. Just like Brett the Hitman Hart and throwing each other out of the ring. And no, Saturday Night Slam Masters was probably the best one. Actually, WWE Raw was pretty good. Or WWF Raw at the time, but anyway, anyway, yeah, anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. All right. I think right. that's good to do us here for yet another episode of Friends Occasionally Not Disagreeing. Uh, I would normally lead the song out as a goodbye here, but I feel like Hudson's talked himself up so much here tonight. Matt, do you want to lead us in the... I have to sing something? 
Yeah, you just got to say um, the words friends occasionally, not disagreeing, but you have to do it in a very operatic and Final Fantasy three voice. Oh, okay. I'll friends, not disagreeing. That's supposed to be Oh Maria, uh, by the way. Okay. There we go. Like All right. All right, everybody, take care. We'll see you next time on Friends yep. Occasionally. Not a All right, bye bye now. Good night.